A leopard's greatest defense is stealth and hiding, though. And so that's going to be his greatest defense. Noreen, I would have said that that cat has not eaten probably for about a week to ten days. Um, he's very thin, very thin. And so I would say a week to ten days. I think that's how long it's been there. Remember, and I mean this is not nice detail, but the snare would have caught him. He would have got his, uh, his foot through it and then he would have pulled and struggled. And it would have taken a while for the cable to snap off the tree that it was attached to. So I think he's probably been wandering around with it for, yeah, a week to ten days. Horrible. Horrible ordeal that he's been through that is thankfully now over. It's just so difficult because, you know, they don't they don't know if we're trying to help them. They, they don't think we are trying to help them, really, you know. And if they did, it would be so much easier because they'd come and seek help <laughs> like a dog might, you know, but they don't. All right, everybody, it's been a, a rough day, really, on the emotional level, but thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for your consideration and for listening to us as we've explained the story. We'll see you again tomorrow at 05.30. Until then, have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to the Sunrise Safari, where the sun is struggling to rise here at Juma Private Game Reserve on the western fringes of the great Kluger National Park. My name is Jamez Hendrai, and back from leave, back in the hot seat, his muscles rippling is Mpo. <laughs> I hope you're all very well, wherever you happen to be on planet Earth. We are heading in a westerly direction on some male leopard tracks here. Uh, if you have just stumbled across the stream, you're watching a live safari. What is that, you might say? And the answer is, well, instead of guests on the back of the safari vehicle, we have Mpo, a giant cameraman and a camera. And we are broadcasting to you live from South Africa. We are on the hunt for a male leopard that uh, walked past our camp sometime early this morning. Please do talk to us using the hashtag Wild Earth on Twitter. You can go to Twitter and use the hashtag Wild Earth. We'll answer any questions you have. Uh, we'll attempt to be friendly and kind to you, uh, unless you are mean to us, in which case we'll probably be quite sarcastic with you. You can also use our YouTube chat stream or our website. My plan, and the plan of both of us, that's both of us, me, meaning me and Steve, Steve's the other guy out here at Juma, is to try and follow up on a male leopard called Maribse, who was the unfortunate victim of a poaching incident. Uh, he had a snare around his neck yesterday, the vets treated him, and we'll go and follow up there and see if we can figure out what's happened to him. And we'll take whatever else comes on the way. I think that's all the housekeeping taken care of. Ah, good morning, Myazotis. What a name, Myazotis. Myazotis. <laughs> Hello, what's your name? Bob. And yours? Myazotis. Oh, I say. Now, there are tracks of a male leopard going along here. Now, who could this be? I seriously doubt that it is the young male Maribse. It's 
most likely the territorial male Moloati, Maripsa's father. But it's difficult to say. Now this tree coming up on the left-hand side here, this one here, has always been a major waypoint for leopards, a marking post for territorial leopards and it tends to be the boundary between the territory of Morwati over there, the territory of Tortoise Pan over here, and those are the two males, and then the territory of Tlalamba the female and Shidulu the female that side. And their predecessors used to have that as a boundary. So it's always a good spot to just check on the ground to see if there isn't any sign. And I don't see any sign here. Olivia, you say welcome back to Muscles. Yes, it's good to have old Muscles back. I'm not sure how he feels about being back. The first drive back is always a little rough. <laughs> X-Ranger, you say, nice to see Teddy back. Does it have a name? It does have a name. It's called My Daughter, isn't it? It's called My Daughter. Yeah, this leopard has not come this far. All right, well, the question is, do we carry on in the hopes that he comes back onto the road? We'll turn around. We'll go a little bit further and then turn around, I think. And then head up towards the north. Right. You go and say hello to the fourth. I'll try and figure out what's happened with this male leopard track. Good morning. Good morning and hello everybody. Hello, my name is Steve and I'm joined once again on camera by Banda. He's back in the hood. Hello everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful Saturday morning. Now, our male lion, we saw last night at the end of show, he walked in this direction. We're sort of following his tracks now. But uh, male lion, male leopard tracks, when they're hours old, it's difficult. They, it's not like following Clalambe yesterday, you know. I've ex explained this before in the past but my trackers back in the day whenever I worked with a tracker if there were female leopard tracks they'd get off the vehicle and follow if there were male leopard tracks they wouldn't get off the car until they've driven until we've driven pretty far and then maybe they go in a block we check around the block okay they haven't come out there now walk in there but both male lion and male leopard they have a potential to walk incredibly far so yeah and this road goes directly east back to Tortured. We don't know where he came from. He suddenly was on Druma yesterday. Let's just double check. He's still going in that direction. Yeah. Can't really see the tracks yourselves in the camera now because. Uh, it's just not the right light. Anna Marie, you ready to bumble on Catterday? Let's do it. Let's do it. Still, still feeling a lot from yesterday, everybody. I'm not going to lie. It was a very heavy day for me yesterday. And I had a dream of two lions coming into my dream. Two big male lions. I was sitting on a couch and they walked into the door and one walked away and the other one I had to push away with my hand on its face. Yeah, and then as I was getting the lions out of the door, a hyena tried to get in. And then I got the hyena out and then I closed the door. Quite positive, I think. Courage. <laughs> Determination. The ability to overcome challenges and obstacles, I believe. Anyway, if you have another interpretation of, of what that means, let me know. Two big male lions just pushed one away with my hand on its face. I mean, I don't think I'd ever, ever think I could do that. 
I was just minding my business sitting on my couch. Okay, so I was going to go left here, but we'll lose signal if we go left. So let's just keep going straight. Thanks, Darcy Miller. Panda, here's your message. He says it's nice to be back. Is it nice to be back, Panda? It's good to be back, it's good to be back eh? Okay, my line is still heading straight here. This is where we had our wonderful elephant interactions last night. Andrew, the video guy today, will bring some great sightings, you say. Nice giraffe tracks. Lots of giraffe at the moment. I wonder if James has got an opinion. There's our male lion. I wonder if James has got an opinion on uh, on why this, uh, we're getting quite a regular giraffe sightings on Druma. It's not just the same individual. Had a couple of youngsters. I've had a couple of females. Couple male adults, males. Because I mean, the time's gone by. We've had giraffe on and off, but every day since I've been back, I think there's been giraffe activity. We haven't seen them every day, but definitely fresh tracks and movement of them around. I feel like it might have been the late rain we've received, and a lot of the trees are going through a new, new foliage flush. Um, many people I've spoken to, <clears throat> when we had rain last week, they didn't have anything in the west. Arethusa or Elephant Plains, like we didn't get any rain. So maybe a lot of the rain we've had has been actually quite localized to right here. And that's leading to us having some nice giraffe activity because of the available brows. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
Now, apologies for not looking at you. I'm just trying to see on the road who's gone where. Who has gone where? And there was a bit of a scuffle with some hippopotamus, interestingly, in this part of the road. Luckily, I wasn't walking around last night, so I didn't see any hippopotamus. It can be quite a dangerous affair. Right, there's a road here called Aubrey's Road, who was named after... Yeah, that's correct, Aubrey. Kelly, you say, happy Saturday. You're hoping for a great day with good sightings. Uh, that, that's my wish for every day. A great day with good sightings. And we will hopefully find you something other than the back of my head staring at the ground in the not too distant future. So the leopard came all the way up here. I think he's cut through the block and is now going to emerge onto this road with any luck. Ah. Now I haven't had any word from the Sabi Sands, which is the reserve authorities now, and that means that I'm not really sure what the status of our young friend Maribse is at the moment, but I will keep you posted as the morning progresses. Let's go down to the Eastern Cape, where Morgan and uh, <laughs> Morgan and Eric, the dreadlock twins, are ready to say hello to you. Good morning, good morning everybody. Welcome, welcome back to another sunrise safari here in the hills of Amakala Private Game Reserve in the southern part of the Eastern Cape, South Africa. It is a very chilly, chilly morning here at Amakala. Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Eric, joined by Morgan behind the camera. And this morning we are going to be your eyes and ears on a beautiful, beautiful start to the day. The sun is going to come up and it will appear in a few minutes, well, not in a few minutes, I think in about 20 minutes time, give or take. And uh, no, it's not too cloudy. Uh, the clouds are pretty spread out, I would say. No mist this morning, which I'm pretty happy about, because when we travel through the mist, it's incredibly cold. It's, <laughs> it's not pleasant. The mist does make everything a lot colder than what it needs to be. But um, yeah, just as excited to get this morning safari underway. Off the bat, where it was it was a bit too dark. I didn't even know what we were looking at before we got closer. But we already drove through the herd of buffalo this morning. There, very very close to where we stay, which was quite nice. A surprise. They generally, when they're on up. On this side of the reserve they generally go and feed on the little open patch very close to where we are and that's where we found them we've got our african gossok is making a noise this morning letting everybody know where he's going to be operating or he or she is going to be operating this morning and we've got some sunbirds it is a sunbird. Yes, it is. The double collared sunbird. Dark main lover, good morning, good morning. I trust you're doing well on a very chilly, chilly morning with a nice cup of coffee and a warm blanket. Yeah, the greenback cameraptors are also out and about. The folktail drongo, that's, some, that's also a bird that we have not really heard in the morning. We see them, but the only time you hear them is when you actually see them. I can't see this drongo. This drongo is definitely a fair distance away from us, but... Anna Marie, no, no new news on the three amigos. Uh, they obviously had their meal two days ago 
well, two nights ago. And uh, I'm sure this morning they're going to be mm, moving. I mean, they might be moving off this morning. Or they would have. They may have done it last night. Uh, Tito generally, not always, generally stay in one place or stay put in night time. However, our three amigos tend to do an awful lot of travel at night time. So it's possible they could have moved from where we saw them last night all the way to a new location. I don't think they would have gone through the tunnels. There's still water in the tunnel. So I think they're still on the main reserve. But they'll probably be looking to go to their favorite corner, favorite tree stumps. Um, the eucalyptus stumps where they usually like to be and I'm sure that will happen if it hasn't happened already pretty soon as uh, they would have digested most of what they devoured those two nights ago Andrew, the video guy, yes, please, please, but give it, give it to us, bring it. We would like to start warming up. One thing I've always found pretty cool is the sun does start rising a lot earlier on the eastern side of the country before the western side of the country. That's pretty cool. Even, I mean, as central as the eastern Cape, I mean, we not really the center of South Africa along the coastline, but we're pretty close to it. And then the differences in the sun coming up here and the sun coming up in Durban, obviously, are very, very different, as well as the sun coming up in Cape Town and the sun coming up here. Edirin, it does sound like an amazing morning and it does look incredible. pretty cool they're still going there was a a reply to that jackal howling in the very distance oh, that jackal that replied was quite quite far away but the sound does travel incredibly far especially you know at night time before majority of the day noises take over but that was pretty cool the black back jackal that was Oh, how time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Wild Earth is turning 17 and we want to make the years count. 17 years of achievements, close encounters and special memories. He's got it, he's got it and he's straight up a tree. Come along as we reflect on our top 17 greatest moments. Here's to more years of connecting you to nature. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
Welcome back, everyone. Well, some white back vultures just perched in some dead trees. He, James and I walked and accessed this block the other day thoroughly, maybe not this far north. But we were very busy around this area the other day. I got quite covered in ticks. So something's going on. We're not quite sure what. But whiteback vultures on their own, we're not far from a water source as well, so it might be the, the only place that they were able to find purchase after giving themselves a bath. You know that whiteback vultures or vultures in general do keep themselves quite clean. Love to wash themselves regularly. It's it's possible but unlikely Marula shortcake um, we're not that far away but we're far enough away that they aren't relating to that uh, story and also generally when leopards have meat under trees quite well concealed it's not always as easily seen as that of a lion kill but I can't discount that fact entirely Oh, that one on the left looks like it is eating something. Or is it playing with us? Oh, it's playing with it. It's a youngster. And it's so hungry it's eating the wood it's standing on. Be careful you don't eat too much of that branch, youngster, or it'll break in, underneath you. I feel like they've just been to the water source, the water body, at some point yesterday. And uh, there wasn't really good temperatures, so they probably just hung out here again. But it's hard to say. You know, when you find just whiteback vultures, it's a very unreliable source of, of finding some form of carcass, especially when it's close to water. If you find whiteback vultures with a hooded vulture or whiteback vultures with a tawny eagle or a batelier eagle then you can be pretty confident that there's something going on granny manga they do vultures have have noises that they make but invariably these are noises they make when they're squabbling i will play you the white back vulture noises that they make when they are squabbling over food are you ready to listen to this That's the uh, sounds of a flock of feeding. The rest of them, I don't really know their calls. This is a, um, a hooded vulture's call. I, I wouldn't be able to say if I heard this, I go, ooh, that's a hooded vulture, but let's have a listen. That's begging of a juvenile. followed by some quarreling adults. Bizarre sounds. I've never seen a hooded vulture nest, so I would never have heard those squabbling or the, the begging of the youngster. Barbara, when you see a flock of 20 to 100 whiteback vultures on the ground competing over food, a giraffe carcass or buffalo carcass, it's unreal to witness. Um, there's so many visuals. The vultures are so, um, so visual orientated in their dominance, how they dominate over each other, how they compete with each other. And then it all just goes to pot when the leopard face vulture lands and all the, <laughs> all the whitebacks move out the way. So there's definitely that social order amongst the individual vulture species and then um, other species have their own pecking order. Obviously with the leopard faced being the largest and the white headed the second, all the way down to the hooded. And I find the hooded vulture the most reliable. When you find a hooded vulture, go towards him and you'll find the meat. The meat will be close. 
Um, they're the smallest, and I feel like they're able to get uh, access to, or they, they can close in on their kids as they're still on the ground, because they're able to take off a lot easier than the other vultures. The other vultures are quite cumbersome, and they can quite easily get caught on the ground um, if a predator tries to go for them. But they've all gone back to sleep. Now there's the snooze button they just pushed. So, Fifty, they are to a degree. I think the, the plight of the vultures is becoming more and more sort of well known. You know, in South Africa, we're having huge issues with the conservation of vultures. We have historically, and it's becoming absolutely paramount now that that education and conservation efforts really go into the area of conserving these guys because they are, you know, the, the cleaner uppers of the bush, you know. And uh, unfortunately, and it's something we've discussed before, but it's happening at an alarming rate right now. Vultures are being poisoned for the traditional medicine market, uh, being poisoned at large scale, and it's really not difficult to do so. Um, the poisons that are being used are easily accessible and you just need a dead animal put it on the ground and you poison it and the vultures will come and the poisoning will kill them and yeah the indigenous or the local cultural markets believe that the vulture has got such good eyesight that potentially it can see the future so it comes to good luck charms or fortunes telling the future vulture medicine is being highly highly utilized lately and it's a big concern really really big concern for conservation okay well we're going to move on from our vultures and uh, let's send you back over to eric in amakala bumbling around and we are heading oops, not all the way to the east but we're heading somewhat east and uh, basically driving into the sunrise and it is going to be poking well the sun she's going to be poking her head out i give it 10 minutes from now i think that's what it does look like we've got these perfect perfect orange over there pink purple purple behind us candy floss clouds soft fluffy clouds that are just touching the little early bit of that sunlight and it does look stunning it really does set the atmosphere up i'm sure we are going to have the sun with us in no time and i'm sure the animals are going to be thrilled to have the sun shining down on them as um, no, it could well have been a very very long cold cold evening for them i don't think it was the coldest but uh it's uh yeah there's definitely a chill factor uh, not very many animals out here in fact, not many, not many, no animals at all. Unless I'm, okay, there are some, but not very many. They're usually large groups of general game, sort of around this area. And I thought, now that the water's here, that they would be a little bit better. Cindy D, good morning. Good morning, all the way from Amukala Private Game Reserve. We hope you're doing well. I hope that you are all strapped in and ready for our safari. I don't see any terrapins, but we're not going to take any chances. We'll avoid it anyway. Now, if I was a terrapin, that's where you want to be right now. See, it's not in the road. You have your own little pool, and there's no worry of cars coming down.
nice little bit of water in this water hole here. And that's why I thought most of the uh, general game would have returned to this area. I would have thought that they might want to get in on this water here with, uh, before it evaporates. But I don't think it's going to be evaporating anytime soon. Uh, schedule for the weather for the next few days isn't supposed to get too hot. I think it will be here for quite some time. Flippy, this would be the first sunrise that we've been able to see in almost a week. The crowds have been sitting on the horizon that side for I don't know why. Every morning. We'll have blue sky above us, open sky down that side, and clouds over there blocking the sun as it comes up. So, but they do, they do uh, become, well, they are generally quite nice, especially when there's mist in the basin, because the basin will be, well, the, if you picture it like this, the basin like that, and mist fulling the basin completely. And when you get to the ridge line, it almost looks like you could just step off the edge and actually drive along the clouds. But obviously not. And when the sun comes up over that, it does look spectacular. Now, well, we do have some animals over here. I'm just going to find a nice spot where I can pull off. I don't want them to... Run away, don't run away. Good morning, you beautiful creatures. Have a look here. We've got some ostriches. We've got two females over there and three males. That's one of them. What is that? Oh, that is the heat from the bonnet. <laughs> I couldn't figure out what was going on on screen, but the heat waves over the bonnet are rising up. It really is a cold, cold morning. I feel like Thomas the Tank Engine blowing all of the steam out of my nostrils and mouth. Gives me great amusement. I've been doing this ever since I was a little child. <laughs> Now, these birds, we've seen them fairly close to us. And uh, when was that? I think I last saw them about two days ago. Um, and don't normally see them in that area of the reserve. Dylan, ostriches are your favorite bird? Well, ostriches are pretty, pretty cool birds. I, I class them as uh, the tame velociraptors, as they, well, I mean, they look like velociraptors with a very, very long, well, a very thin and long neck. And uh, I mean, they might as well have teeth in, the, in that beak. I mean, a peck from an ostrich is very sore. Very, very fast. Uh, definitely the fastest two-legged creature on earth. There's nobody that can run faster than an ostrich. Absolutely not. You know, they generally can get up to a speed of up to about 60 kilometers an hour. Maybe with a bit of adrenaline added, they could even get to 65, maybe just short of 70. That is very fast for only two legs. Most animals that have four legs, I mean, they you know, they generally do about 50 plus. A hippo can run at about 40. And a, um, a buffalo generally goes at about 58, which is quite, quite scary. And uh, this is why when you or well, on foot buffalo can can be quite quite scary they'll come at you really quickly the same with Kim yes you can call them a flock but my favorite my favorite comparison well 
uh, my favorite collective noun for them is a wobble. <laughs> a wobble of ostriches and if you've ever seen an ostrich take off when they startled they did they do kind of do this zigzag wobble kind of thing where they move their their bodies from side to side Morgan's just going to change one of the indie filters so we can just get a bit of better lighting there and uh, oh, so yes a uh, a wobble is another collective noun for ostriches hey, quite an hilarious hilarious one just like a bloat of hippos puma then you will feel our pain an ostrich bite is not something that should be taken lightly it is sore it is painful and uh they, do, they normally don't do it once. They normally peck, 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 peck until you move away. If you didn't learn from the first peck, you'll learn from the third or the fourth. But uh, well, like I said, ostriches are very, very quick. So if you ever think, thinking of trying to take something from an ostrich, I'd advise that you refrain from doing that as you may receive a couple of injuries ostriches also do kick and they've got a nasty talon or a long not a not a long talon it's very close to a talon it's like a fingernail on the end of their long big toe and uh, if you receive that to the body it can definitely cut you open and will leave a nasty nasty scar slash wound and they'll continue doing that they'll kick you repeatedly 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 Hello everybody, 
Uh, welcome back live with us here. And uh, a little bit of an update on Maribs. He's got a terrible snare wound across his back. But you can see his head is up there. Oh, he's moving. He's got, he's been fed an impala by the Sabi Sands. And you can see he's moving, not too badly, but he was provided with some meat by the Saab. Oh, he was doing some scent marking there. He was doing some scratching, urine spraying. And Saab Sands provided him with the Impala and they've been babysitting him. We just uh, arrived here and the, the warden was here herself. And uh, they've been here all night since yesterday, since yesterday's operation. Myself and Cam spent a good couple of hours with Maribs yesterday until the vets got here. Um, he moved off a bit, so we had to follow. And uh, what actually happened is that Tlalamba was in the area and uh, she must have flushed something because he went running off in that direction. Then he was looking and looking and looking. So he must have was hoping for her to provide him with a meal. Um, we eventually got the vet in. Uh, the vet darted him. We went through the whole operation of removing the snare, cleaning the wound, stitching up uh, where stitches were needed, and uh, given some antibiotics, given some treatments for the ticks, um, and all of the things that are necessary. It was a very professionally done operation, I must be honest. And uh, then they woke him up. It took a little bit of time for him to wake up because his condition. He's lost an enormous amount of weight. Everybody really has lost an enormous amount of weight. Okay, I think that is where his meat is. So we're gonna try and reposition again. But I was just chatting with the Sabi Sands person now. So I um, didn't get James Richard's question there, Jared. And uh, they said tlalamba has been here all night and she actually just left a little while ago. They seem to be following each other. stolen a bit of his food um, but it was to be expected but the reason why they be sitting him one of the reasons is just to make sure that all the drugs wear off normally the drugs take a few hours you know drugs are are quite a complicated thing everybody but when an animal is immobilized they don't regain their senses almost immediately and so there needs to be the sort of caretaking period they're wild animals, you know, we can't leave them in a cage, we can't hold them on the vehicle, you know, we've got to leave them in the wild. And while their senses aren't 100% okay, they run the huge risk of hyena, lion, um, other male leopard, and that sort of thing. So the guys stayed here all night with him. And because his condition is quite poor, um, they've just been a bit concerned with obviously how long the drugs are wearing off, you know. So obviously no one can really tell. Uh, his just his behavior is one of being quite lazy and quite lethargic but that's understandable he's very weak and he has eaten a very large amount of the impala that they gave him and uh, the sabi sands have told me that they're going to be watching or being here on site with him for the next two days at least um, and just monitoring the situation last night was the most important and he's survived the night and nothing's come and stolen his food apart from Tlalamba interacting with him to a degree but it's hyena and male lion that need to be kept away if need be but there he is everybody he's obviously a shadow of his former self but uh, we have confidence that he's going to be returning to full health obviously it's no guarantee as infections are real but we'll be monitoring the situation closely and we'll be keeping you abreast moment by moment, step by step. Okay, so James is at a watering hole. Let's go and touch base with him. I am here 
at the Buffels Hook water hole. Uh, rumour is that, that, well not rumour, I mean the fact is that Klalamba is also right. I'm not sure Steve mentioned that, but she has had an interesting night with Marip, so we had a long... No, sure. so you got sound? Yeah, sure. It's alright. Yeah. Um, we had an interesting conversation with the Sabi Sands Warden who has, was with Marib's for... So, so, well, she's been with him since two o'clock this morning. Uh, probably in, in need of some coffee, um, as was her dog that was sitting next to her, <laughs> also in need of some coffee. And she said that uh, they had a very interesting interaction, Talamba and Marip. He was up and walking around a bit, and she was just kind of following him. Uh, that's Talamba. And they are, of course, brother and sister, half brother and half sister, same mother. And yeah, no aggression at all. Uh, she did steal a bit more of his food, which was unreasonable given that she'd stolen a carcass, a whole carcass yesterday. But, yeah, she's still around here. I don't know what that means for where her den is or if if and when she's going to return to the, the cubs that we think she has because she does appear to be lactating. All very difficult to say. Very interesting. But nice that they've had a very comfortable interaction with each other during the course of the night. And I'm glad that we could inform you of what was happening there. And um, I know a lot of you like to share screenshots and that sort of thing. I would refrain, if possible, from sharing screenshots of the wound because it just tends to generate um, fairly unreasonable responses on social media. Up to you. That would be my advice. Here is a hippopotamus. And he's obviously not wanting to have too much of a swim this morning having a gentle rest on the shallow parts of the dam Franny you said it sounds like Talamba was making him feel okay yeah I don't know what she was doing she's always been a, an eccentric cat let's face it in the best possible way And now all is peace here. So I think we're all being very positive about Marips, and we should be. But I mean, he obviously still has a lot of challenge to go. I don't know, James Richard. I think they probably would if they could. Uh, a, a hyena did come in and stole a piece of the carcass last night. Um, didn't go for the leopard. Um, would the Asabi Sands intervene if a whole group of them came in and threatened him? Yes, I think they would if they were there. I think they'd take a fairly, you know, they take a fairly practical approach to this. They have a, a limited, they have li limited resources, which they deploy to great effect. And I think that if they can, you know, help an animal that's being threatened and an animal that's been obviously hurt by human beings and they will absolutely do that. Here comes a hyena coming down towards the water now. It's probably the very same hyena. But they're not going to risk their lives for it and they're not going to risk the life of a hyena in order to save Marips, if you know what I mean. So that they're not going to sort of shoot a hyena to prevent a damage to the to the leopard. Um, yeah. You know, they'll do what they can, but they do, I think their approach is very much, look, there's a certain amount we can do. This is a wild system and, you know, they have to take a relatively practical sl slash harsh approach where the thought is, you know, if we lose one leopard, will he be replaced? And the answer is yes. Um, and, you know, that's probably the basis on which they'll they'll assess the risk or the risk reward of interfering you know they've done a massive amount over the last 24 hours and that they'll continue to do that does that make sense there's a very nice hyena shot there with the reflection
have some lines. Cedric's probably going to fall that for it. We have arrived here at the ridge line and we are going to find a nice little perch somewhere. There seem to be people stopped all the way there. And the sun is kissing us beautifully. It is still chilly though. It will take a little while to warm up. Excuse the radio. But uh, well, no miss down in the basin today, which I thought was going to be a given. As I did see, like, when we were coming from the dune thicket, looking across the valleys, I could see there was some mist kind of poking its head out of somewhere, but uh, clearly not, not down here in the basin. It does look beautiful. Very much chilly, lots and lots of movement of animals, uh, lots of jackal tracks, brown hyena tracks. I've seen a couple of different sizes and shapes, which is cool. I've seen some big, big brown hyena, and then some rather small, smallish ones. Um, it's possible it was on the same road. It's possible it was the same brown hyena. Um, you know, it, uh, sometimes the, the front paw, well, generally, most of the time, the front paw is bigger than the paw at the back. And that's just because of the longer legs at the front, in the front, do support a lot of the weight, with the shorter legs at the back, you know, carrying the hip. And most of the business in four brown hyenas is here. Morgan's just going to change in these cards, making the brightness lower or brighter. Not too sure. Now everything is going somewhat well, although there is one little cloud that is going to block the sun eventually from us. Um, not a very big cloud, but nonetheless, it's still going to do it.
Blue Jay Fly, um, the elephants, from what I understand, are somewhere in the river line down there, very close to where, in fact, exactly where they were, uh, I think it was about four or five days ago. Are you a t No, you're not. You are a plot runner. Thought it was a terrapin. Um, but the elephants in the area where we've come from is, from what I understand, I think it's just the Zika there. The young bull, actually the 20, the, the, the 18, or it should be 20, the 20 year old with uh, no tusks. What's nice is being at this elevated level, you can obviously look down and do a bit of a fair amount of scanning. But another pretty cool thing is from up here, a lot of the water, if there's water down there, the reflection of the sky comes immediately straight back to us and we can see it instantly. So we can see a lot of the places where there is uh, a decent amount of water all the way down in the basin which is pretty cool it looks like uh, shell duck pan is full not full but got a, a decent amount of water in flucky's flay pan has got some water in and it looks like the potholes all along <laughs> fish eagle road are still full now those potholes are not just potholes those are craters they are deep dug by elephants kept maintained, excuse me, maintained by warthogs and uh, other animals rolling in them. Sometimes the rhinos will go and roll in them. Uh, but mainly, yeah, mainly used rhinos, buffalo and warthogs will go and roll around in those mud pools. Oh, that's not Fish Eagle Road, that's actually River Road, my mistake. So that's, that part of River Road is incredibly bad. Jagodo! Uh, it can sometimes, sometimes we do, we do seem to think that we can see other animals more active. Um, like, our plan is we're just waiting for it to actually warm up a little bit and our plan is to go to the meerkats and see if they're going to be out and about and generally meerkats are more active in the morning than they are in the evening oh goodness there's someone behind us i'll quickly just pull off for them and they can pass us we don't want to be holding holding up their drive but uh, Good morning, most of the time. Now we can see them more active in the morning than we do in the evening. Not always, not always. Um, uh, a lot of the animals in Amakala are both very active in the early mornings and in the evenings. Um, I think sometimes in the mornings you can get luckier with lions and their movements. Uh, sometimes the behavior or the, 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 the lousy sleepy uh, sleepiness can kind of catch up to them in the evenings and sometimes they may not want to actually move around at all where sometimes in the mornings you know after after a long night you can find them moving around doing what lions do so sometimes, not all the time, sometimes uh, morning behave, uh, morning light can bring about different behavior in animals. Erica, it does, it does sound magical. We would love to be able to see if we can't come across those beautiful meerkats, but uh, now our sun is going behind the cloud and definitely 
did feel the heat start to slip away now. I'm sure we'll have it back in no time while we're driving along this ridge line. Just having a quick scan, seeing what's down there. Doesn't seem to be much going on down there. But it does sound like there's something going on up at Juma with James. So we're going to send you back up there and go and investigate. Well, yes, there is a hyena. And the hyena has turned on to... Uh, he's gone into the block. There are apparently wild dogs on this reserve. On Juma. And I think that's where the hyenas kind of trying to go. And um, there's another vehicle looking for them. And so we're going to try and follow up there. That's going to be our plan. Steve's going to hang with the leopard for a little while with Maribs just to make sure that if the hounds pitch up, they don't harass him. And then we'll see if we can. Fancy playing Safari Snaps? Or showing off your photo skills in fun competitions? How about sneak peeks of our brand new camera spots and live chats with fellow Africam fans? Well, Africam All Access has got your back. Just head to Africam's YouTube channel, hit the join button and select Africam All Access. You'll unlock Africam premium website perks and all the VIP benefits of our YouTube memberships. Right, let's keep going. I still got sight of one dog. Stations' pack is now on the ridge crest between Hyena Road and Gari Cut Line, about 250 to 300 meters south of the boundary.
They are still mobile west. Currently best approach is either to come in on the ridge crest on that game path in the southerly direction or follow my tracks off Hyena Road. Right, so I know that this isn't the best view and if you've just joined us and wondering why on earth we're sort of bashing through the bush like this, a pack of wild dogs on the hunt. Oh, they're running now. And this is a very tricky area. I can still see them and you're going to get glimpses every so often. And we don't zoom in when we're moving like this because it's impossible to see what's going on. You know, we give you a quick view as they <laughs> naturally they disappear. And there's only two of them so far. We saw more than that to start with, eh? Yeah. Three or four. Okay. It's very easy to lose them. They're jumping like that because I think it's wet. You, you say, say you say, Thelma. And Paul and his thumb are bringing luck. Yes, they are. These animals are now going down into the thickets towards the drainage line near Gary Cut Line. Just where you know? Coming up uh, central west. Yeah, I think your best bet is now going to be Gary Cut Line. Stand by there. The other thing is that nobody else around here is particularly keen on getting into a thick area like this because they've got guests on the back of their car and there's nothing quite like turning around and finding a thorny branch sticking out of your guest's forehead. It's happened. Watch your head there. All right, it's going to be very hard in here. I'm going to try, obviously, and stay with them. Ederin, well, you know that the chances of my getting stuck are very high. I can't see them anymore. Stations, I've lost sight of them going west into the I think into the drainage. Okay. I'm here on Vulture's Nest at the moment. Yeah, you need to cut the fuel. There they are. It does look a little bit on the tired side, doesn't it? His eyes look very, very exhausted. Oh my goodness. Oxpack, you're almost the size of that in Bala's head. Be gentle. Just be slow. Still learning. Here we go. Getting another spot that the Impala can't often reach, right near where the horns is just starting to push out. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, it's a little one. It's a juvenile. And it's also joining the party, waiting for somebody to feed it. Yes, flap your feathers. Oh, shame. <laughs> I can't get rid of them. <laughs> Look at them, they're having an argument. No, you leave me alone. I said, don't go there. Shame, little one. You might have to buck and rear to be able to get those birds off. Holding on nice and tight to your fluffy fur. How exciting, James. How exciting. I, it's exciting just hearing what's going on on the radio. It's, <laughs> I don't know how James is communicating on the radio with the way I hear. It sounds like he's moving. <laughs> so we do lose each other in places like that. It's not necessarily that it's because he's following wild dogs. It's just the fact that that little area that he's going into is a little bit of a dip bit of a dip in our signal and along this road in about five six hundred meters it's the same it's a bit of a dip but uh, we've had a report that there are some lions around Chelapan could it be Chela herself I don't know there are three lions there lionesses there and there were three vehicles there until 
someone said wild dogs and now there's no vehicles there as you can imagine everyone is hound bound hound bound so we'll go have a nice relaxing couple of minutes with some lions allow james to catch his breath and uh, get out of that block I was in that area yesterday. Clalamba took us into that drainage line yesterday. That's very interesting, everybody. We didn't notice until we left Maribs, but in the tree above Maribs is a daker that clearly Clalamba put there. So she is on scene, and not only was she full yesterday, she was also actively hunting, or maybe she'd already treed that daker when she then got more food. So it's not impossible for leopards to do that. Uh, maybe that was the reason why he went running in that direction in the first place. As you heard the Daker call, she treated it. He was trying to find her. We were following him. He couldn't find her. And then eventually, well, she decided to steal his food as well. What a clever girl. Okay, so I'm just gonna have to stand there for a second and we are going to go through a bad single spot in a second. So there's a vulture again in the tree. Scattered throughout the landscape at the moment, the white backs. So much happening this morning, Anna Marie, you're right. So much happening. Saturday. It is Saturday, is it not? Yes. Stay with us, everybody, for a short bit longer before we go through this depression. If I do move forward, we will lose you. So we'll just wait a moment and just chill out with our white back vulture on uh, the branch. I just want to get an update. Uh, everyone, so just confirm best approaches to set Link Road from Spaghetti Junction. Right there at that little link road that goes to Spaghetti Junction. You will see our tracks heading into the western side there of the uh, Shatima thing. Open there. We'll find them. Copy, thank you very much. The white back vulture, also known as the griffin vulture, because the tongue is a forked, strangely enough, and possibly it helps them with feeding on meat. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature, while giving you access to lots of our amazing content.
a decent amount of animals over there. We've got red heart pears, some zebras. Are those zebra? Yes, they are zebra. Two groups of zebra. One at the top, one at the bottom. And it looks like there's heart to pierce on heart to pierce road. Quentin, indeed, indeed it is, and that's thanks to the rain. It wasn't looking like this a few days ago. Well, it wasn't looking like this last week before the rain, and now after the rain, everything is beautiful, green and lush. The animals must be over the moon. The amount of uh, 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 grass there is for them now, with all the brand new shoots, it will be nice and sweet as well. We'll have all the benefits and all the nutrients that they need. As a whole, the grazers should be generally very happy. It's gonna stop here. No, have a look over to the field across from us. A beautiful setting it is indeed there for those zebra and uh, especially on a morning like this where it's quite chilly they'll be utilizing their stripes to help warm them up obviously we know that the black stripes do attract heat and the white stripes push it away so those black stripes they will be loving at the moment as it will start moving their blood around their body just that little bit more and give it a bit of a warmth or warm up and uh, that should generally get them get their body temperature to the temperature that they want it at So, there are some Karoo scrub robins that are making a fair amount of noise in the bushes not far from us. And I'm sure you can hear them. It sounds like little birds having a bit of an argument. Now, as you know, or you should have seen in some of our adverts, uh, Wild Earth is offering a YouTube membership program. There are some great benefits to having this membership. For one, that you will get a ad-free stream that you can pause and rewind while we are live. Um, go to your YouTube channel, you can click out to f well click and you can find out more about the channel it's um no it's a pretty simple process it's not too difficult um and uh, obviously most of your smartphones most of your laptops and most of your smart tvs will come with youtube already pre-loaded on it so all you have to do is go on to the youtube app and uh, subscribe and make your account of course um so yeah for those dstv uh, users who are wanting to make the change um i would suggest making the change to youtube it'll be uh, quite easy i think a very good transition if you will Well, this is a lovely little glen that we are in. Hanu's mom, yes! Zebra on the hillside is not something that we usually actually see. You know? I mean, you, you usually see the zebra on fairly 
level ground you know you would leave the hills and the mountains for the cape mountain zebra not the plain zebra but today it is the opposite we've got our plains game up along the mountain not the mountain the the hillside here I imagine that they are taking in every last little bit of the sun rays to warm them up. Ooh. We're going to send you now back up to James for a wild dog update. Well, the wild dogs, I'm afraid, have managed to elude us. We chased them down towards that big riverbed area and unfortunately nobody was able to pick them up the other side and we took a while to get around. So we came to the waterhole here just to have a little listen and a wait. We've been here now for three minutes or so, four minutes, and they haven't pitched up. So, you know, it's one of those situations where you just don't know where to go. Do we go backtrack a bit or do we assume that they've crossed over towards sort of the clearings near our camp not sure i think what we will do uh, there's somebody coming up that road okay so what we're going to do now i'm going to reverse and we're going to go out and onto the clearings outside our camp and just sniff around there. They were moving fast, obviously. They were on the hunt. And we'll see. But this is what happens with the wild dogs. They run so fast. Phew, so 50. Busy morning, very busy morning. What? Uh, it's just a, it's a, it's a tree with yellow flowers. I thought it was a lion on a termite mound, but it isn't. So Steve, Steve has gone down that way. I think he's got three Nkohuma lionesses. We'll find out from him shortly. But we're gonna go up here and see if these hounds don't pitch up. So it has been a very busy morning and continues to be a busy morning. So this is the old Vuyatela camp where when Juma used to have guests, this is where they would come and stay. And we wonder if the dogs haven't gone around the other side of that. We'll go and see if we can find them. You can go across to the wharf, who has managed to catch up with those three lionesses. Cats and dogs, everybody, cats and dogs. Hang on one second, we have relocated on these three lionesses. Standing by, Cervelo. Yeah, I'm not copying you if you are speaking. Yes, you're most welcome. Okay, so some sleepy cats. What have they been up to? They came in from the south. Both of these are adults. You can tell they're both suckled before. No fresh suckle marks. Those are all little flies on the body. Hundreds of little flies. And uh, a semi-full belly. They can get fuller than that. There we go, Mina. Cat a day is off to a good start indeed. It's nice to get a, a brief visual of Marib's and while we know that Tlalamba's in that area, uh, firstly because the 
Sabi Sands told us about that. She'd been there all night. We saw her there yesterday, but it's very interesting to see that she'd also <laughs> treed a daker, probably before any of what happened yesterday took down and everything that happened yesterday. So, very interesting. Kuhuma Pride, I'm almost certain. Three members. Probably ate an Impala. Probably ate an Impala in the night. We ain't got nothing like a Saturday morning snuggle, you're right. Very nice little snuggle puddle. This one's busy grooming. Cool. Animals are on. Gotta go shortcut heading towards where Terra Main access. Such cool conditions this morning. Giraffe girl. Some lovely sounds. Giraffe girl, love your opinion on. Let's quickly go to James. He's got his dogs again. Here they are, the hounds of wildness. <laughs> <Phew. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, it's quite lucky that one still gets excited by this sort of thing, because when one has been doing it for such a long time, uh, one can tend to get bored by such things, but not me with these guys. Four wild dogs. So I don't know which pack this is. I don't know if it's a piece of a pack or if it is a complete pack. I also think they're going to cross out of the reserve and make life unpleasant for us by leaving. No problem, Annelie. We love seeing painted wolves. Um, I don't know where you think you're going, buddy, but the rest of your pack's going down here. Animals now going onto Zoe's road. The other thing is that it seems that everyone else operates here at a quarter the speed that Wild Earth does, which means that by the time anything happens with these animals, Everyone else has hardly blinked. All right, so they're just checking out an interesting smell there. Obviously. Not sure what could be smelling on that tree. All right, on we go. And Paul, ready? Thank you, tell me more, yes, we do our best. We do our best. The distinctive smell of stinky dog in our nostrils. Please excuse me jumping on the radio every so often. Obviously things happen with great speed. Ah. Right, so we think this might be the pack with 
one male from the six pack and three females from the Liu, Liu Ban pack or the other way around. Whew. One female from the six pack, three males from the Liu Ban pack. Liu Ban, Liu Ban pack, Liu Ban pack. Right, let me just get out the way for these guys. Oh dear, Rusty's starting to sound a little rough. I'm just going to go forward and then I'm going to have to move out the way so that these other guys can have a look. Otherwise, all they're going to see is Paul's substantial muscles. Not much else. There we go. Whew, would be nice if they sat and had a little play. Farmba. <laughs> cool. On safari. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We can count. She's going to fall down again in five, four, three, two, one. She's going. Oh. It's not going to last much longer. She's got a food belly. Your eyes are very sleepy. Eyes are getting very heavy. OK. 
Okay, so we're gonna stay with our lions here. And it sounds like Eric is spending lots of time with the meerkats. Let's go check in with them. We're here at the meerkat den. And it appears everybody is still sleeping. No. Obviously, it does get a bit cold in their burrows at night time. In their burrows, they spend a lot of the time cuddling, snuggled up to each other to try and keep their body, body heat the same and to also benefit everybody else's body heat. No. When the sun is shining like this, that you would expect that they'd be out and about because this is when they warm up. Now, unlike some animals, mostly, it's mostly actually humans, really, but other animals as well, um, meerkats don't have a fat reserve, so they don't have body fat, meaning they are slim, cut, slender which means they get colder very, very easily. Because obviously fat is what helps keep us nice and warm. When the body's cold, it will burn fat. Uh, when the body's tired, it will burn fat. So it, they don't have any reserves in a sense. So they do need the sun and they do need each other when it gets really, really cold. And I think they are too snuggled up in their burrows to even think about moving out. But if they came out their burrows, they would be greeted by this lovely, lovely sun that is warming me up quite nicely. Not a decent amount of birds in this area. We've had the uh, the Cape long claw. Alana, yes, yes, birds of prey. I think birds of prey are probably their main their main problem when it comes to predators. That's probably the one that they have to watch out the most for. They've got to watch out for jackal buzzards, pale chanting goshawks, African. Um, African goshawks. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, mm, secretary birds, maybe. Um, booted eagle, marshal eagles, long crested eagles, uh, yellow billed kites to an extent. But um, oh, that's probably about seven. Seven of maybe. Seven of maybe ten birds of prey in this area that will go for meerkats. So yes, they do. They do got to. They've got to worry. They've got to watch out. And they usually do have uh, protocols for this type of situation. Um, they will have a centaur, and the centaur is the one that sits on top of a termite mound or sits on top of a bush or on top of a tree, and he keeps a lookout. He keeps a look up to the sky and keeps a look out on the floor for both ground and aerial threats. And uh, obviously, if he sees an, an eagle or some form of bird of prey in the sky, he'll sound the alarm and everybody will either scurry back to the burrow or they'll find somewhere else uh, where they can take shelter or refuge to protect themselves. I don't think you'll be able to hear it, but it's something that I can hear. And um, there's, uh, it sounds to me like it's a, a black-winged kite screeching. It sounds like two of them screeching to each other. That It's not a very nice sound. I'm not going to try and imitate it anymore, but um, it's a kind of screeching, uh, screeching scream. Um, and that's usually something that they do when they 
trying to annoy each other, fluff each other's feathers up. Trying to steal something, steal a meal, a meal from each other. Anna Marie, it is very nice to have such a beautiful warm day here. We have missed these warm days. Uh, let us not forget that the air is still cold. It is warming up lovely here, but we are still going to experience some rather cold conditions on the way back. It's actually getting louder, so you may actually be able to hear the kites now. On top of that, you'll hear the meme, and that is the uh, Cape Longclaw. Also used to be called the Orange Throated Longclaw. I don't know why we changed the name. <laughs> I don't think we need to hear the impression of the black-winged kite. There's a uh, ant-eating chat. It's also making a bit of noise behind us. And there was a wryneck as well. It was just behind the, the but basically in between the zebra and the meerkat then. And he was making a decent amount of noise. And most of the birds that were close to us that were making noise have decided that they're going to not make noise anymore. The zebra are warming up. You can see they're not really doing much, just standing there. And they're standing with majority of their body or majority of surface area facing the sun. And uh, they are, that's for their black stripes to harvest that heat and to use it for themselves. No visitors as of such. Very, very quiet here. But we'll sit here a little bit longer and see what happens. In the meantime, we'll send you back up to Steve to have a look at his lions. Thanks, Eric. Well, you haven't missed much, everybody. Our lioness. Um, collapsed as soon as you went off air, revealed quite a nasty wound underneath her chin, and then rolled over. These animals are very tough. They can undergo incredible wounds and injuries and somehow survive them. We talk often about breakaway prides and how they form. You know, there haven't been many buffalo around of late. And so a pride of 10 or so feeding on one impala leads to conflicts, leads to confrontation, leads to a lot of animosity. They have to kill lots of impala in an evening to sustain themselves. So you quite often find them breaking off into smaller groups. They will reunite with each other if they can. But if those groups separate for any extended period of time, potentially could, uh, <laughs> potentially could form a breakaway. Sounds like there's a leopard on power lines. James is going to quickly see if he can catch up with. Cataday is smashing itself now. 
female leopard walking west on power lines. Hmm, what's your favorite ant? Sleeping lions? Okay, beautiful sun, three round cats sleeping on the floor, on the ground. The subadults up on the left there, you can see no visible mammary glands yet. And then two adults here. Oh, look at the stretch. And a female leopard that James might imminently be finding is going to be Shadulu. So, everybody, please join our YouTube membership program. There are some great benefits. Best one being you're able to add free. Okay, let's quickly go to James. Right, well, things are all kicking off here. The dogs we lost. Aubrey came around. Aubrey is a guide here at Juma and uh, Shudulu the leopardess. I think I think it's Shudulu. It's a female leopard. Is coming along this road. There she is. Um. Shall we wait? No, let's carry on a little bit further. She's quite close to the western boundary, so we're not going to have a long sighting of her. <laughs> Unbelievable morning. It is incredible. You know, some days there is literally nothing to see here. And then other days, <laughs> that's what you get. Excuse the glorious wheel there of the Toyota Land Cruiser. Phew. Our own Toyota Land Cruisers will be making their debut next week. Do you want to go further forward? Yeah. I don't like that shot. I don't think it's going to win you an award with a power line, with a power line and an aluminium wheel. Billy, I'm afraid I didn't get that comment. All I got was which I don't think is what you said. Oh, she's running into the bush here. I think she's going to, she's stalking something. There we go. Billy, you say this morning has been insane. It certainly has been insane. Yeah, that looks like Shidulu to me. I mean, what a day. Yeah, that's a very distinctive looking cat. Whew! I don't know about you and Paul, but I feel like I've been put through the ringer this morning. Yeah. I, we got into the block there looking for those dogs. And I, because it was no sun, I actually got a bit disorientated and drove a bit, a bit, bit of a circle. But uh, we managed to make our way out.
Right, so for those of you who have just rejoined us, the wild dogs have arrived in the sighting of this leopardess. The leopard is still sitting next to the tree. The dogs are moving that way. I, frankly, I don't know what to do. Do we stay with the leopard or with the dogs? Um, yeah, I'm really in a 50-50 position. Let me go forward. I feel like the leopard is a, certainly a more relaxed option. You got it there. Those dogs are about to cross west. Back a bit. Yeah. <laughs> And <laughs> now she's moving. I'm crossing on a jimmer. Stations' this pack of four has pitched up on the power lines. Mobile West still. I'm going to stay with Shidulu. Uh, Orbs is also with Shidulu. James, confirm you have the Makoa, the Sovereign West, towards Triple M? Affirmative. Probably about 150 metres east of Triple M. There we go, I can hear somebody's just found the dogs on the main road. Phew! What a day everyone, what a day. Station's pack of four has just crossed on to Triple M from the power lines on Vuyatela. They have been left unattended in that direction. Go ahead. James, just confirm uh, I heard Ingwe there as well. There's Mashola, is there Mashola and Ingwe on Juma? Yes, affirmative. Um, two packs of dogs. The dogs, uh, one pack just crossed out, and the other pack was mobile west on the northern boundary with a service vehicle. And then Shudulu here on the power lines, also slowly mobile west. I've done a lot of speaking on the radio today. Oh, 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 something's running. They're running, the, the dogs are chasing. Dogs are chasing the impala and the leopard's chasing the impala. Leopard and dogs after a young impala. Okay, we're gonna move. Unbelievable see scenes here. <laughs> What a day! Um, well, hold on again, everyone. If we lose signal, I'm sorry. This could be a serious sighting. So that young Impala was flushed. I can't hear anything. It's incredibly thick in here. There is a little clearing through here. Sorry about the bashing and boshing and mashing and mushing. There, there, there. I know that's the vehicle. Orbs, have you got anything there? Okay, she's coming this way. I think that impala may have escaped. Let's just go forward a bit. Yeah, Rosemary, that is the truth. Juma is on fire this morning. There she is, there's a leopard. She hasn't got an impala or a wild dog. 
think she's listening actually. There we go, she's moving there. I'm just going to stop here. It's not going to be a good view, but. The rest of the pack has crossed west out of Juma. <laughs> I do apologize if I'm sounding a bit garbled, everyone. It's, it's quite difficult for my small one megabyte brain to keep up with what's happening here. Yes, Gina, it does feel rather crazy. Wild dogs chasing an impala, leopard chasing wild dog, and Paul and I chasing it all. It's Paul who's taking the real bashing. He's sitting up pinion here. I can duck behind the dashboard. He just gets whacked in the face while trying to protect the camera. Okay, let's go forward a bit. There's a little clearing up ahead here. Leopard Queen, don't hold your breath, you might die. You see her? No. She hasn't passed, surely. No, she's gone in here. You got her? Whereabouts? Shall I stop? <laughs> oh, there she is. Phew. Now, some of you might not understand what I'm doing on a radio. In these private game reserves there are game reserve there are lots of lodges around and everybody's got different traversing rights. And so you need to try and keep everyone updated on the radio because lots of people obviously want to bring their guests to see sightings like this. And obviously when it's kicking off like it is here, it's quite tricky to keep everyone informed. And you combine that with the incredible inability of the average guy to listen to the radio. There she goes. <laughs> and a uh, very good point there, Jarrett. Uh, this is a great way, a great advertisement for you to join our YouTube channel because you can pause and rewind moments like you just had there. So you can go to our YouTube channel, click on join, especially if you're currently watching on the DSTV bouquet because you can't do that there and you will get served advertisements there. And if we do come off that platform, which is quite likely at this stage, the best thing you can do is to come across to YouTube. If you do not want us to come off that platform, please do go to our petition and sign it. It's not our petition. The viewer put a petition up. It's now gone with 16,000 signatures. And we'll tweet a link to how you can sign that now if you would like to. I don't know. No, we 
haven't managed to break the vehicle yet. You can see her tail there. Oh, here's a dog. <laughs> so this dog is looking for the rest of the pack. That's why he's making that who call. The leopard has gone off towards the left-hand side. She can smell the leopard. He can smell the leopard. I think the leopard's on the termite mound. The leopard's on the termite mound. Dog is going for the leopard. Dogs and cats in the wild and in the domestic situation are not good friends. <laughs> We're just going to help. Oh. Aubrey's going to get down through there. Now, in fact, that's quite a nice... You would have seen the vehicle there and how difficult it is to get a big car through there full of guests. It's much easier to just hit and pour on the back of the head with the odd bush. So the interesting sound that the dog was making there, that kind of growly noise. Smelt the leopard, then saw the leopard, then went for the leopard. Yes, Franny Jan, I think we have earned a good breakfast. I think that's a good point. I think we've earned a very good breakfast. Now I wonder if we're not gonna find that leopard up a tree. think she's run west. Let me just carry on here. I think we've lost. We may have ended the sighting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll carry on down here. I just wonder if the leopard didn't go into a tree. She went down here, Aubrey said, and the dog carried on towards the west. Mm. Sorry, Paul. One day we'll find a nice... One day we'll take you tomorrow where you're not going to get hit in the tree by in the face by anything. All right. I think we're going to Steve now, I'm not sure. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature while giving you access to lots of our amazing content.
Wow. We hope that you've enjoyed the excitement up in Zuma. And down here in Makala, it's not as exciting, very calm. And that's how we've been seated here, waiting for our meerkats. And our meerkats have eventually popped out, in and out, in and out. Uh, we'll apologize if you can see heat waves. Not sure exactly what's going on. We thought it was the bonnet originally, but now we're sort of shooting not over the bonnet. And another apology for the very, very loud plane that is flying over Amakala at the moment. I hope it doesn't chase away our meerkats. Hmm. Very low for a plane to be flying over a game reserve. Suspicious. Oh, look at that. You can see them crawling around the, the place, trying to get from one place to another, where they can just warm up a little bit. starting to come out now. Oh, these meerkats need patience. Lots and lots of patience in order to have them come out. Uh, the last time that we were here, we did struggle to see them. In fact, we didn't see them at all. That was also on a fairly windy-ish day. And uh, wind is not never a good thing, especially for animals who can fall prey to lots of different other predators. If it's very windy, it's very difficult for them to actually hear anything sneaking up behind them. So they prefer not to go out. So they stayed in their burrows. And now may I catch up? Well, I see one. Maybe one or two, and they seem to have disappeared. But uh, we'll wait here a little bit longer and see what happens. But in the meantime, we're going to send you all the way back up to the excitement up in Juma. Well, it has settled slightly. We've got Shudulu. We managed to find her again in this kind of dodgy drainage system. I think if she moves from here, it's going to be very difficult to follow her. She's such a distinctive looking cat. I haven't seen her for so long. And it's really nice to spend a bit of time with her. She looks... I mean, yes, she does look like Claire Lumber because she's got spots on her, but really, when you study their faces, it's so different in shape. Yo, Itzy, this has been an Ayoba drive, very much so. For those of you who don't know what Itzy means, Ayoba means great, basically. Everything's good. Ayoba. My wife regularly tells my 18-month-old daughter that she's not being a yoba. At least you are not being a yoba. All right, so she's going to cross out of the reserve now, unfortunately. Stations should do the mobile west now towards the power lines, uh, towards Triple M, probably about 150 meters from there. Uh, let's carry on. I'm going to try and drive in here. We might need Steve to come and fetch us, though. Right, well, that's the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> Can't go any further. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad we stopped there.
<laughs> this bush is not a yoba. This is not a yoba bush. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the wolf. Apparently our signal is not very Ayoba right now. The radio does not stop, everybody. It has not stopped. The wild dog and Shadulu sighting has taken up a lot of bandwidth. And uh, everyone has forgotten about our three lionesses here. Well, James, good luck. Good luck uh, either staying with Shadulu or getting out of that area. I know exactly where you are. <laughs> uh, really looking forward to uh, Paul's facial expressions when I ask him how his morning went. <laughs> facial expressions and some of the the noises that he'll make. <laughs> so I believe Giraffe Curl has got an answer for me. So Giraffe Curl, you reckon it's just pure luck? Pure luck. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping for a little bit more than that, but I'll take it. We go through giraffe phases. calling orange breasted bush shrike Rachie you are correct you are correct Chella was originally called Harry Chin and then there was another nickname associated to her according to someone that everybody knows who had a hairy chin and then that was deemed to be inappropriate and it was changed and then uh, that was one of the reasons why she was given a new name now, in my opinion all lions have got hairy chins it was before my time that she got named that Twenty nineteen when she denned pretty close to where we are. She denned in three different places with the same litter of four. Having lost three of them, one of them survived. Pretty close to where we are now at Chelapan. They couldn't care less, Jasmine, you're right. They own the night. And they were busy at one point. And they'll probably be quite close to this place this afternoon. Shadulu probably not so much. 
and the wild dogs, well, who knows where the wild dogs will be. This is On Safari. So our meerkats have lost interest in us and they're now paying attention to this jackal. I don't think anything is going to happen. I think if that jackal does come closer here, he's probably just going to scare the meerkats away. More than anything else, I don't think the meerkats are going to stick around for too long if that Jackal does get a bit closer, but it doesn't seem like he's coming this way. Honeybee, it is a lovely, lovely scene. There's a zebra right in the background there. And uh, he's watching us, watching the meerkats, and the meerkats are watching him, watching us, watching them. <laughs> Lost interest now. And uh, that jackal's actually going further down the slope towards the east. We are facing the south, and he's going towards the east, so that's good. Good for us, good for the jackals. Not good for the jackals, good for the, the meerkats. They really, really are. Absolutely amazing animals. You can hear the Cape Long Claws. Sound a little bit like uh, like cats. 
It's just a different kind of call. It sounds very... You know, we were... When we were taught about them, it was it, it we were taught that they're supposed to sound like a, a, a laser pointers or laser guns so they're supposed to make a video 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 noise i haven't heard any of that it's more just a meow 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 <laughs> Still those two meerkats out. <clears throat> Not to show the others have just disappeared. They don't want anything to do with what's going on outside. So there must be a, at least about five or six long claws here. Uh Benji, no, not really. I mean, if they walk over it, <clears throat> they can maybe kick a little bit of soil into the holes, but not really much damage can be done. Um, from It's my understanding that there used to be a homestead here, and uh, a lot of the, the resources that they used to build that homestead a lot of the rubble is sort of kind of hanging around here and has been almost covered in soil over the years. And the meerkats have made the rubble almost their den, which is perfect for them because uh, obviously in amongst uh, piles, piles of rubble, there's lots of little kind of tunnels and little pathways and um, little chambers. It's perfect. It's perfect for them, you know. If if it weren't the meerkats, I'm sure the Dussies would have moved in. But um, well, definitely, and if it's rubble, then it's very sturdy, very strong. Uh, an animal like a zebra shouldn't really disturb it too much. Oh my goodness, an anteating chat has just landed behind that monk, uh, meerkat. Zebra in the background, big yawn. Agatha, indeed. It was nice to see a juggle. That's the. Yeah, it's the second juggle. I think it's the first juggle that we've seen today. I know we saw one yesterday, but wasn't interested in stopping for us, just continued this little trot. I think the last nice sighting of a jack of jackals we had were those two, that pair that we had, um, sure, almost before the beginning of the rain, when the elephant herd was still up in the dune thicket, and we had Ballara, and who was it? Ballara and Kola, I think it was that we had in front of us. But that was last week. Only one meerkat I can see now. The other one is probably still around. I don't remember seeing him scurrying off into the burrow. Mind you, they do have different entrances and different exits. They haven't just got one, one exit and one entrance. They've got multiple ones. And uh, that is for safety reasons. Obviously, it's now a snake crawls into one, a big, big snake crawls into the burrow. They want to be able to escape and they escort their little babies out. Because a snake will definitely snag a, a baby meerkat, no problem. Beautiful and still now. Our birds seem to have calmed down. I 
Vanson, indeed, indeed, the termite mounds are made by the termite themselves. They do look a little bit man-made, like a like a giant pizza oven. But uh, no, they're naturally made by the termites using uh, saliva, feces, and the soil to make this incredibly hard, hard substance. Which, uh, it's not indestructible, but very, very, very close to indestructible. Um, no, definitely damage a car substantially. Some more heads poking out at us, looking this direction. Very nice that we've been able to have these meerkats out for us. And as I always say, it is a very patient game that you have to play with them. Otherwise, we just don't see them. Not all meerkats are like this. Some meerkats are more habituated than others in some areas. Um, Obviously, in, in this area of Makala, not everybody comes to see them every single day. So they, they get used to not having the cars here. Um, and being a relatively new-ish, not really, really new, but a relatively new-ish colony on Amakala, they are still a little bit wary of the vehicles. And naturally so. Oh, there's a little baby. That was cute, man. Some more coming out. So, I'm just trying to find a little place to lie, to sit in the sun. Oh, that's pretty cool. We are going to send you now back to the sleeping, sleeping lions with Steve. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Very comfortable. Very comfortable. Flat, fat. Bridget, you can spend the whole day staring at sleeping lions. Well, 
Pan and I would stay here all day, but we do have to get back for breakfast and a meeting. Jill, it really depends, you know, I mean, some some individuals who get named purely on behaviour. Um, what generally happens is leopards that get found or den on an area, when they get found, um, they will get named after their first year by the first person who found them. Um, and lions, well, lion prides obviously get their names depending on where they occur. I'm not always sure exactly where the names of the prides come from, but sometimes individuals will get a name dependent on all sorts of different reasons. Sometimes it's just we don't want to be calling them the, the, the sub-adult anymore, or there's some particular behavior that they're going through or for the storyline. I mean, what we have here on this show is quite a storyline, and it helps to say, well, this male versus that male rather than male one two and three so they develop characters but how they always get named it, it can be different and it comes about in many different ways and forms i don't think especially with the lions that there is an actual concrete narrative In two magical African wilderness areas, the Masai Mara in Kenya and the Great Kugu National Park in South Africa, five expert safari guides follow a cast of compelling animal characters and the never-ending stories that define their lives. The Cat Report documents real stories of real predators, as witnessed and captured by a band of obsessive wildlife filmmakers. <laughs>
All right, welcome back to those of you who've just joined us. Shudulu is still with us. She's on the road in front of us on the western boundary of Juma. And I'm pretty sure she's going to continue towards the west. But at the moment, she's just wandering up this section of road. So we'll stay with her while we can. If she goes off the road, I'm afraid my patience for driving off the road is now worn very thin. <laughs> and so has some pause. Other way around, Nicola, would she hunt, well, not necessarily, would she hunt a wild dog? Yeah, she'd kill a wild dog puppy, absolutely. But you saw there, or you may have seen, that when she came across, or when the wild dog came across her, a single wild dog, the dog went for her and she ran. So the big thing there is not that she's not faster and stronger than a wild dog, because she is. It's that she just can't afford to get injured whereas the dog is prepared to take more of a risk because it lives in a pack with friends. Now that view that you've got of her there is just... When you drive onto a road like this, it's what you want to see, that gentle lope of the Prince of Cats in the distance, and you think to yourself, oh... Something is right with the world today. And then you go and hopefully spend some quality time in close proximity. Glorious. Okay, shall we drive on? Shoo! Roy! Happy birthday. You said it's been a great safari to celebrate your birthday, uh, start your birthday celebrations. Yes, it has been some morning. Roy, that's a very sneaky way of getting a birthday shout out. We don't normally do those. <laughs> I'm just giving these guys the chance to get across. Hey? I will do that, thank you. He says, when we've got a moment, please come over six cold ones for helping them find this leopard. There we go. Bye bye, Shidulu. Famba Gatle. And she's going into Aratuza. And that is the end of that. The Western Channel. Goodbye, my dear. What a morning we've had with you, and we are very grateful to have seen you. <sighs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> there she goes down the road. All right, let's go and see the man who completed the cat trick today, not with a cheetah, but with a mere cat. So we completed the cat trick. We have left our meerkats bathing in the sun. We are now slowly, slowly starting to head back towards the western part of the reserve. Still got a, a plenty of time. There's still lots of animals that could potentially be seen along this very, very bumpy eroded road. Nonetheless, we're still doing it. I do feel for the maintenance team on Amakala because they fix these roads, they make them go from horrible to something that's almost like a two-ply road and then the rain comes and washes all of their work away and then they're back to square one. It's not always ideal, not the best. 
And obviously, with them, with there being so many vehicles operating on a Makala, you know, one good road when it gets wet, you take 10 vehicles driving down that road, and the road goes straight back to square one. That's also one of the reasons why they close a lot of the the black roads. Well, quality of the road down, and uh, we especially don't want it to that dangerous, dangerous, uh, um, sort of a dangerous place, in a sense. Uh, we don't want the, to, we don't want it to be dangerous to drive on the road as well. But, uh, lots and lots and lots of birds, very, very active at the moment. I think it's taken a bit of a while for them to warm up. Ah, uh, canine girl. The views of Amakala are just something special. They really, they really, really are. And on a day like today, it's very clear. There isn't necessarily that haziness that we usually have in the in the air. And that's quite nice. Um, that does normally obscure us from seeing very, very far. Even if it's beyond the reserve, the surrounding mountains are always nice to admire. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature while giving you access to lots of our amazing content. It was a big puddle, very big, big puddle. Now we are on the, the flats here. They, uh, there usually is a bit of life, generally bird life, lots of bird life around here. Um, just seen a, what looked to me like a brown hooded kingfisher just by the flight pattern and the size of the beak. Um, there's lots and lots of fiscal strikes that hang around this area, mostly because a 
obviously there's mice here, there's small beetle, small uh, uh, birds as well. Um, there's lots of different species of crickets and uh, beetles and bugs and all sorts um, here as well that they will prey on. There's normally a, a common buzzard around and a pale taunting goshawk and you only sit on a tree over there. I haven't seen them in a while. Well, what an action-packed morning it's been. Action packed. I suppose the, the least action we had. Oh, and here's a male leopard track here. <laughs> Very nice male leopard track. Are we going to find a male leopard now? Well, just add it to the list. Add it to the list of Cat's Day ex experiences. Well, James had a whacking crazy morning with uh, wild dogs and then Shadulu. We caught up with the recovering Marips. The area is still closed. Um, the Sabi Sands is monitoring it. Um, they actually requested that we come there this morning and have a look. Um, so everything is in their hands. They're being very, very, very professional and very good in their approach. And um, it's an issue that they are taking incredibly seriously, everybody. Incredibly seriously. But as James was discussing on On Safari yesterday, if you didn't get to see that, you should go back and have a look at the first 15 minutes of On Safari, where James really goes into the detail of, of the story and uh, the issues. And there's a much larger issue then and really can be looked at as one isolated incident it's occurring across the Kruger National Park it's occurring across our conservation areas and it does stem from poor gov governance which spills over into poor management and poverty poverty so Stacey, it's been a very interesting morning and uh, I suppose we needed a little bit of lightness today after yesterday. And James's heart rate has definitely peaked. I don't know if he's going to need to exercise today, but I'm sure he will. His energy, has, uh, his heart rate has peaked and Paul's definitely going to just... I'm very excited to see Paul's reactions when you see him now about how... Ooh, he's going to have some nice noises, eh? <laughs> Panda knows exactly what I mean. <laughs> Earth lover, you've had your fair share of heart rate raisings this morning. Yeah, it's been nice and relaxed for us. Nice and relaxed. Nice to just tone it down a little bit. And um, as Cam would say, on a morning like this, it's a great morning for breakfast which is coming right up oh. maintenance vehicle on their way to Tambeta ah oh, hey December his name is December it might be because he was born in January, I'm not sure. Probably born in December. I've never asked him, I shall. Next time I connect. So everybody, it has been a, an enticing, enjoyable morning with meerkats and general game, jackal and zebras, wild dogs taking James across Juma to the Duchess of the West, Shadulu. Kapalumkuhuma lionesses with full bellies and maribs 
recovering on his reverie up in the northeast. Everyone, don't forget to check in for On Safari this afternoon at 3 o'clock. I'll be there with Panda. Looking forward to the highlights. But uh, we will be joining you straight off that for live drive. So have a wonderful day until then. Goodbye.